Welcome back to The Good Life Journey. Have you ever daydreamed of achieving financial independence? A place where you're financially secure and free to spend the time as you wish? If this sounds very good to you, stick around because this is what we'll cover in today's video. The simple idea behind financial independence is to save as much as possible and to invest it so that eventually you can actually live off those investments without having to depend on, per on uh, employment. For many, this occurs actually when you retire at age 60, 65, 67, whatever it is in your country. However, with proper planning, this can actually be achieved much, much sooner. In a previous video, we examined six possible reasons why humans continue to work so, so hard despite living in a world of abundance and in spite of the huge technological and economic progress that we've witnessed over the last century. Some of these reasons ranged all the way from we work really, really hard just to gain social status, all the way to we continue to work really, really hard just because we've inherited a scarcity mindset from our farming ancestors over the last 12,000 years. I mean, a scarcity mindset that's clearly not fit for purpose in today's world of abundance. So, in light of these reasons, which I encourage you to check out, do you really want to throw your precious years at a job that you're not truly passionate about? A recent global poll from Gallup revealed that very few people find their work meaningful or interesting. Data collected across 160 countries showed that 77% of the global workforce are either not engaged or actively disengaged in their job. In light of these statistics, a 40-hour work week is likely not the first preference for most of us. A lot of people would prefer to have shorter working weeks, would prefer maybe not to work at all for their current employer. But even for those two out of 10 global employees who find who are passionate about their current job, who enjoy what they are doing, they may still work, uh, choose to have slightly different hours, more flexible working conditions, or simply may choose to spend their time differently and to spend more time with their family and friends. And this is why taking control of your finances is so important. Working towards achieving financial independence ultimately uh, it provides you with the ability to design what your working career will look like. It is up to you to decide whether you want to work very long hours or you want to work part-time and how long you want to have your career stretch over the years. Do you want to have a 20-year career, a 15-year career, a 35-year career? Ultimately, it's up to you if you have full control of your financial situation. Today's video is aimed at those who are just starting out on their journey or who have heard this for the very first time or find it appealing. We're going to cover First of all, how much um, money do we need to have accumulated and invested in order to reach this place of financial independence? And we will also cover other basic and important concepts such as savings rates and the importance of tracking your expenses over time. So if you're interested, please stick around and let's jump right into it. Your financial independence number reflects the amount of net worth that you have to have invested in order to technically be financially independent. In theory, you could drop your job tomorrow if you achieve this number because you could sustainably cover your monthly and annual expenses. The problem is that most people have absolutely no clue as to what is this number. Is it 500,000 euros or dollars? Is it 1 million? Is it 2 million? Is it 4 million? Um, even very high earners have a very uh, poor sense of what enough is, what this uh, potential number that they should be aiming for is. So let's give you a rule of thumb. You can estimate your financial independence number by multiplying your annual expenses times 25. This comes from the commonly used 4% rule of, uh, developed but through research uh, by William Bengen. And it's commonly used by retirees exiting the workforce want to estimate roughly how much money they can withdraw from their invested portfolios without fear of depleting it over a very long period. Let's use as an example the average expenses of a household in Germany, which is 2,500 euros. We would take this amount and multiply it by 12 to have the annual expenses and multiply this number again by 25, arriving at 750,000 euros. So as the 4% rule of thumb goes, if we manage to have this amount invested in a broadly diversified portfolio of uh, yeah, stock market investments, mostly index funds, we would be able to withdraw sustainably 4%, so 30,000 euros per year, 
uh, each year. The 4% rule also accounts for inflation. So in the first year, you would be able to cover your expenses of 30,000, and then the following year, you could adjust upward uh, accounting for inflation. As illustrated in this example, it's a very simple calculation. However, it's very important to have a good understanding of your monthly or annual expenses. Surprisingly, a lot of people only have a very loose understanding of their budget and of their expenses. And this can be for various reasons. Mostly, it can be resulting from a lot of fluctuations in expenses throughout the year, which kind of like, it doesn't help to have a yeah, consistent understanding of where your money is going. But in most of the cases also, it's just a matter of people having taken the time to sit down and study their financial and spending habits. One way to proceed is to just use a simple Excel sheet where you record each and every single one of your monthly expenses that you incur in together with, with its value. This exercise is extremely useful in studying your financial expenditures and uh, figuring out patterns of consumption and later on on areas where you can potentially cut back without um, taking a hit on your lifestyle. For some starting out on this journey, this sounds extremely te tedious. To record every single expense sounds like a waste of time. But isn't it a little bigger waste of time to spend a, an extra decade or decades in the workforce working in a job you're not passionate about? Trust me, this investment in time today, which really isn't very much, and will save you a lot, a lot of headaches in the future. If you're looking for a quick, rough, first estimation of what your financial independence number is, you can obtain this quite easily looking at your bank account statements. So one idea would be to add up all the expenses that you've incurred in, in the, over the last year. Another approach could be to only add up the income that enters every month and sort of over the last 12 months, and then check what's the change in net worth over this same time period so that you can figure out quickly as well your expenses. With a clear understanding of your monthly income and expenses, you are now ready to calculate your savings rate, which is, and I'm not exaggerating, the single most important factor for achieving financial independence. Savings rate can be calculated by dividing the amount of savings that you manage to put away each month divided by your net take-home pay. Following up with the German example, the household that incurs in 2,500 euros of monthly expenses each month, let's suppose that they have a combined a net income of 4,000 euros. 4,000 euros minus 2,500 euros, they'd be saving 1,500 euros per month which divided by 4,000 euros gives us a 37.5% savings rate, which is not bad at all. This is actually roughly three times more than the German average already. There are numerous financial independence calculators out there, which are incredibly helpful in helping you estimate a, how long it's going to take you to reach your financial independence number, the amount that you need to have invested in a diversified stock market portfolio, preferably of index funds, that will allow you to safely withdraw this 4% each year to cover your expenses. In, in today's video, we're using the financial independence calculator linked in the description below. And following up with a, a German example, the household that spends 30,000 euros per year and needs to reach 750,000 euros, uh, adding the, the assumptions that we can see here, uh, this household couple would reach, would reach financial independence after only 16 years at age 46. Technically, they would be able to retire nearly 20 years before the average. Now, I'd be very curious to hear from you. What is your financial independence number and how soon could you theoretically drop the labor force if you chose to do so, if you continued with your current lifestyle patterns, with your current expenses and levels of income? Using these financial independence calculators is an extremely powerful tool if you use it in combination with your monthly tabulation, the Excel sheet that I mentioned earlier where you record each and every single one of your monthly expenses. Why? Because you can identify very quickly 
areas that where you're overspending, areas that are potentially not bringing you any particular joy, uh, that would, that where you can cut back on them, and you can see what difference it makes in uh, increasing the speed uh, by which you reach financial independence. Let's go ahead and use a very quick example for our German household couple. Let's suppose that they spend 300 euros every month in going out to restaurants, but that it's not something that particularly brings them too much joy or pleasure. Let's suppose that they just decide to cut in half this expense by 150 euros. What impact would that have on their financial independence timeline? How much sooner could they reach financial independence? Well, when you plug in these numbers into these financial independence calculators, you observe that their timeline would go from 16 years to 15 years. They would reach it one year sooner. You can interpret this as spending 150 euros extra on restaurants for this couple means having to work an additional year of their careers. And uh, this is actually quite a powerful framework, powerful tool that you can use to examine whether some of the expenses that you're incurring each month are worth it. This is a, can be a bit of a light bulb moment for some. For example, you can go over your entertainment subscriptions and maybe identify that um, maybe you can live perfectly happily with only one or two instead of the four that you have subscribed to. Uh, what impact does these, do these small changes have on your timeline? Uh, some of them are quite modest, but they add up extremely fast based on my personal experience. Uh, and it can be an extremely empowering exercise to do this. Of course, you don't want to cut back on things that bring you joy and happiness in your everyday life. You don't want to feel deprived. But for most, our monthly expenses are just littered with uh, things that are truly not bringing us any, any value. Why is it that relatively small changes in expenses have an outsized um, impact on your financial independence timeline? Well, there are, there are two factors that explain this. Firstly, when you cut back these 150 euros on restaurants, you're reducing your financial independence number. So you no longer have to reach 750,000, you have to reach a slightly lower number. So that's the first reason. But the second reason is that your savings rate increases. You're able to uh, save more each month. So this is kind of like a non-linear relationship. It's not linear and it's, that's one of the reasons why it's hard for, for most people to, to grasp at the beginning. However, yeah, as I mentioned, small changes in your expenses can make a really big difference. And of course, it's important to remember that the opposite is true. Small increases in ex monthly expenses hurt you in two ways. First, uh, you're increasing your lifestyle, so your financial independence number is going to be increasing. You have to reach a, a higher net amount invested. And secondly, your savings rate is going to be less. Each month you're saving and investing a slightly lower amount. So it, it's a kind of working against you in a non-linear way. And with this, we're reaching the end of the video. I hope you found the content valuable. Have you ever tried to sit down to record your monthly expenses? What was your experience? Was any of the concept brought forward in this video unclear? Please share with us in the comments below. This channel covers topics related to living a good and meaningful life. Future videos will continue to focus partly on uh, different angles of achieving financial independence. Why? Because having as much agency as possible over your finances and therefore over your lifestyle is a critical ingredient to living well. I've also left a link in the description below for book recommendations for you related to either achieving financial independence or to just to establishing good financial habits and other aspects related to in investing, uh, mostly as this channel advocates in index fund uh, investments. And with this, we've reached the end. Thanks you so much for sticking around and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.